Hi, welcome to Learn Kubernetes with Google. My name is Aldo and I'm a software developer in UK. I'm also an active contributor to the Kubernetes scheduler and the job controller. In the previous episode, I showed how you can use the job API for parallel processing. In particular, I showed how to use an external queue service to assign tasks to workers. If you haven't watched this episode, you can find a link in the description. You might have noticed a couple of caveats with the previously presented approach. First, you have to set up an external service to host the work items, which will consume resources in the cluster. Second, if you're trying to containerize an existing application, you might have to modify the existing code and add some library dependencies to be able to read items from the queue. If your parallel job just needs a set of fixed values as input, or if the input can be deduced from an ordinal number, you can do parallel processing with a static partition. In Kubernetes 121, we introduced a new mode for tracking the completion of a job, the index completion mode. We call the jobs that use this mode simply index jobs. Note that this feature is alpha in the 121 release, meaning that it is disabled by default. You can enable it if you have access to your cluster's control plane by setting the index job feature gate to true. To learn how to enable feature gates in a cluster, I also left a link in the description. In an index job, every pod created by the job controller is associated with a completion index. In order to declare a job as succeeded, the controller expects a succeeded pod for each completion index from 0 to n minus 1, where n is the user-defined number of completions. The completion index is set on each pod as an annotation, and the worker can read it through the job completion index environment variable. Let's see how an index job definition looks like. Note the new field completion mode, which indicates that this is an index job. Another addition is the number of completions. While parallelism indicates how many pods can run at a time, the completions field indicates how many pods will run in total. Now let's look at the task. In this example, we have put the work items as an array in the code. In a real-world scenario, you could obtain them from an external file, a config map, or you can dynamically generate them from the, from the index. Then, you can use the job completion index environment variable to process a specific item of the array. Here, we are just printing the value to the console. You can visualize this, this aspect like in this image. Here, we see one completed pod and two running pods as determined by parallelism. Each pod processes one item, as opposed to the, to the parallel job pattern with an external, external work queue, where each pod might process multiple items. If a pod fails, the job controller creates a replacement pod for the same index. As usual, you can start this job using kubectl. After some time, you can observe in the list of events for the job the behavior that I described, that is, two pods created at a time. And we can see from the logs of, for one of the pods that it only processes one item. As you can see, index jobs can allow you to quickly build jobs for parallel processing. And if you don't know the work items beforehand, you can set up an external queue service to feed your job workers. To learn more about the Kubernetes jobs, you can refer to the official documentation link below. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Learn Kubernetes with Google. Until next time.